In this episode, I want to talk about Diogenes of Sinope and the parallels between him and Jesus of Nazareth. And is Jesus of Nazareth a cynic? Diogenes of Sinope was born in 400 BC, Greek cynic philosopher best known for his holding a lantern that faces the citizens of Athens. He was a student of Socrates along with Plato. In the words of Plato, he was a Socrates gone mad. He was driven into exile from his native city of Sinope after defacing currency. Apparently he went to the oracles at Delphi and they told him to deface the currency. Diogenes came to Athens where he met Antisthenes, one of many of Socrates' students who established his own school, who at first refused him as a student, but eventually was worn down by his persistence and accepted him. Diogenes believed in self-control, the importance of personal excellence in one's behaviors, and the rejection of all which is was considered unnecessary in life, such as personal possessions and social status. Now this is a big this is big in what I'm actually getting into because what happens here is there's a story of Diogenes and they said that he walked around with just a cup. That's all he had. He lived in a barrel. He lived in the middle of the city in a barrel. And he had a bunch of dogs around him. And one day he was going to the river to drink. And he always brought his cup and he would dip his cup into the river and have a drink. Well, apparently one day there was a child there at the river. And he saw the child cupping the water with his hands and drinking from it. So Diogenes took his cup and threw it to the ground and said, This is too much materialism. And actually rebuked ever, ever holding the cup ever again. Why do I bring up this story? When the Nagamadi scriptures were found, they actually found a version, a gospel version of Jesus. It was the exact same story to a T, except just take the word Diogenes and flip it with Jesus. It said that Jesus of Nazareth was living in the city and he only had a cup and his, instead of the dogs, it's his 12 disciples who are always around him. Instead of Plato, it's the Pharisees. They just switch it around a little bit and make it Judaized. Well, anyways, Jesus goes to the river with his disciples, and he sees a boy cupping the water and taking a sip from it. And Jesus takes his cup and throws it to the ground and says, I don't need this anymore. It's too much materialism. The stories, parallels are as perfect as can be. I mean, this isn't even like a speculation. This is just parallel, complete parallel. So, then you look at Diogenes' philosophy, some of the things he said, and he, he realized, it makes you realize that Jesus is very much a cynic. I made the claim that Jesus is an amalgamation of many people, many important people, not just Caesar, but people like Socrates, Diogenes, and a lot of the big Greek thinkers of, of the time. And uh, I think the Messiah concept started off under the Ptolemies after Alexander the Great conquered the world. And they translated the Hebrew Bible into Greek and they made the Septuagint. Philo of Alexandria was a product of that. So Philo of Alexandria is writing about the Logos and the Trinity and the Father and the Son and, and uh, inheritance of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Arenos. Arenos was a Greek god who was the father of Kronos, who was the father of Zeus. So the kingdom of heaven is translated into the kingdom of Arenos in Greek. So we see the Greek philosophy and Judaism, Judaism meshing together into what will become Christianity. And I think that the entire character of Jesus of Nazareth is in a total amalgamation. Now, when people say that, they use, use, people assume that I'm saying that there wasn't a real Jesus of Nazareth. That's not what I'm saying. 
I think there was a Jesus of Nazareth. I just don't think he's anything to do with the Bible. I think he was probably a rebel. He might have even been running around with the Sicarii. He probably did not did not respect the Roman Empire. According to the Talmud, he was hung on a tree on Passover Eve, and that's the end of it. There's no there's no witnesses of him coming back to life. In fact, Philo Philo was was alive until until the 40s A.D. He never mentioned Jesus once. He wrote all he he would be the first person to write about it if anybody. He doesn't write about it. Neither does Pliny the Elder, who wrote an entire encyclopedia in the city of Caesarea, the same city where Cornelius has a vision in the Book of Acts. It's the same time period, same location. So the fact that those two don't cross paths, and there's no mention of anything any resurrection or any, any miracles or anything like that. Also, I think the in the book of John, when they talk about the, uh, the zombies coming out of the ground when Jesus is crucified, that is ripped from Julius Caesar about Julius Caesar's funeral. I believe it's Plutarch that wrote this, where they say that, this is, this is obviously a myth too, they say that during his funeral, zombies came out of the ground and the sky was blood red and there was storms and madness and it matches up with the book of John. So Diogenes, some of the things that he brought to the table in the, in the school of his philosophy, in the school of cynicism, Diogenes once asked Plato for some wine and then for some dried figs also. Plato sent him a whole jar. Now if somebody asked you what two and two add up to, said Diogenes, would you answer 20? In just the same way, neither give what is asked of you, nor answer the question that you are put to. Such was the way in which he mocked him for being a man who talked without end. This also matches up too when Jesus tells his disciples, if you ask for a fish, do you give somebody a stone? And you see the cynicism line up perfectly. Like this, it's... It's almost like it's, it could be the same person saying these things. The philosophy, the cynicism philosophy, matches up perfectly. On another occasion, while he was eating some dried figs, he ran across Plato and said, You can have a share of these if you like. And when Plato took them and ate them, he said, I invited you to take a share of them, not to gobble them, not go gobble down the lot. Diogenes offered Aristotle some dried figs. Aristotle realized that he had some witticism ready to deliver, so he he knew what he was he knew he was being up he was being put to the put to the test. But if he failed to accept them, so he took them and said that Diogenes had lost his witticism along with his figs. When he offered some figs on another occasion, he accepted them, raised them up high as one does with babies, and then return to them saying, Great is Diogenes. When reproached for begging when Plato did not, he replied, Oh, he begs only. It just seems like Diogenes is poking the bear when it comes to the, the Stoics. You know, you can, you can kind of inter interchange the Stoics with the Pharisees. So, in the, in the Bible, there's, a, there's the story when Jesus tells the dead to bury the dead. There's also a story when Diogenes is asked what they would like him to do with his body after he dies. And he tells them, throw me over the bridge into the river with a stick so I can fight the fish. And then people said, how are you going to fight the fish if you're dead? And then he looked at them and said, why would I care what happens to me if I'm already dead? So there's another play on the let the dead bear the dead. Like, don't worry about the dead people. They're dead. They don't care. Same philosophy. The greatest of all, all stories of, of Diogenes is when Alexander the Great had just re recently conquered all of Thessaly in Greece. This is before he even goes into Asia. He comes down and he goes and he sees Diogenes in the marketplace. So when Alexander the Great goes and visits Diogenes, he says, What can I do for you? And Diogenes says, You can get out of my sunlight. <laughs> And then he, got, he says, Alexander's so shocked by that he's so fearless and so calm and collective that he says to him, if I was not 
Alexander, I would wish to be Diogenes. And then Diogenes says, I would wish to be myself too. And then later on, Alexander catches Diogenes in the garbage, looking through bones, flipping through some bones. And he said, what are you doing? And Diogenes says, oh, I'm looking for the bones of your father, but I couldn't distinguish them from the bones of the slaves. <laughs> this man was a beast. He was an absolute beast. And uh, I'm not surprised that they identified him with the Messiah concept. So, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Catch you guys later.